Girls, I feel the same way. Thank you, Baxter. That was beautiful. Well, good morning and welcome to worship with First Baptist Church of Martinsville during the season of Eastertide. For those of you here in the sanctuary, it is so good to be in your presence again. We are so grateful to hear the organ live, to hear music live again as the world slowly comes back into a new normal. And for those of you who are joining us virtually, welcome. We are so glad you are able to join us from wherever you are. We will worship together in spirit and in truth today. I would like to welcome our guests here today, let you know that you are loved and you are appreciated here with us, and I hope that today is a special time of worship for you. I would like to give you a couple of announcements today. The first is that Becky would like to let all of you know if you are musically inclined or would like to be at some point, she would like to restart our music program. So First Baptist Music Ministry is getting back into action. It will begin this Wednesday at 5 p.m. So that's April the 28th at 5 p.m. We'll rehearse here in the sanctuary. So if you play anything, sing any part, we would love to have you. And we will start to have a little more variety in our worship time together. So exciting, and I hope you can join with us. Also, for those of you who attend Sunday school, you know we've been doing one online class for the last year, uh, and we're going back and forth between the two um, different curriculums that we use here at First Baptist, and uh, a whole order of those just came in. So if you are uh, attending Sunday school, you can pick up your formation study guides. They are in. Uh, that is the May to August booklet. and. Uh, Richard is here in the back, and he will be glad to hook you up one of those if you don't have one already. Also, if you are a part of the church family, today is our business meeting for April. We'll meet on Zoom at 1. Notice the new time. We moved it to 1 so everybody has time to get home from worship. So log on at 1, and we will make sure you are up to date with everything we are doing here at First Baptist. I also have a couple of missions announcements. The first is, if you have not signed up already, Saturday, May the 1st, we will be working the Henry County Food Pantry from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. We will volunteer our time to pack up food boxes and sort donated clothing. We need at least 10, uh, but more the merrier because we can spread out and do a lot of good work. So uh, we'll meet here at the church at about 2.30. We'll have child care workers if you need it. And uh, we would like to have everyone who can make it we will be doing really good work out there. We've worked with them already a couple of times and it's been very rewarding. We like to be a part of that good work that Jesus said we do. When we give to the least of these, we are giving to him. Also, uh, we have some facelift projects. You may have noticed if you have walked any further than the narthex that we are doing some priming and painting and giving a little facelift around the church. So if you are good with a paintbrush or would like to learn how to be good with a paintbrush, we would love to put you to work. We will be doing some of this work during the weekdays, some on weekends. Um, but if you are able to help, if you will let Mary in the church office know, we will definitely find a place for you to come help us out with that as we continue to improve our facilities. Also, our April Women on Missions focus is child literacy. So we're partnering with United Way, Smart Beginnings, to sponsor children to receive books in the mail from Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. As you know, these books are free, but of course the postage and so forth does cost money, so we are raising money to cover that. Uh, it is $27 to sponsor a child to cover the postage. We will continue collecting that through the end of the month, so if you haven't given yet, you still have time. Give this week to that important cause. You can do that either by dropping it off here at the church on Sunday or on during the weekdays, or you can give online at fbcmartinsville.com slash give. So friends, now may we center ourselves, find our space to love God and neighbor, to be transformed through all we do in worship together. Our call to worship this morning is a song called Gentle Shepherd. If you don't know it, listen to it the first time and we'll sing it through twice. Uh, if you can stand, we ask you to. Gentle 
hearts to hear a word from you this morning. We're not always aware of just how much we need to be changed by your love each day. We ask today that you help us, guiding us like a gentle shepherd toward your sweet pools of grace. May we be thoroughly changed by what we find, loving more abundantly so that this world would know us by our love and not by our exclusion or our hate or our apathy, but, God, that they would know us by our sacrificial love, the kind that Jesus taught us to live out. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My tongue will speak of your righteousness and of your praises all day long. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Join me. Sin. He sets the prisoner free. 
Our first scripture lesson today is from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. The next day their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Our second lesson comes from the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit he has given us. The word of the Lord. Well, hello to our children here and those of you who are joining us virtually this morning. Today during children's worship, we're going to talk about love. Can you say love? Love. Yeah. Good job. We know that love is a feeling, right? We love people, right? Sometimes you say, I love you, mommy. I love right? mommy. Uh-huh, good job. <laughs> And that's a feeling we have with our heart, right? Right here, we feel it right here. We love each other so much in our heart. But did you know that we can love people with our actions too? Mama. We can love people by the way we treat people. When we love someone, we want to take care of them, don't we? When, yes. we're, when they're sad or lonely, we want to go and give them a hug. And we might give them food if they're hungry, right? That's how we love, with our actions. And God tells us everyone, everyone in the whole world is someone we should love with God's love. That means we want to take care of everybody, even people who might be a little bit different from us, right? In our scripture today, we heard that to love people like God loves people, we do it not just with our hearts, 
right? Right here, but with our actions. So today I want to give our girls here, and if I had more, I'd give them to all of you. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little sticker. You like a sticker, don't you? And I'm gonna put it right here on your hand. What is that? What is that? Is that a heart? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, Adeline, let's put one on your hand too. This is, this is a heart, isn't it? Have you seen a heart before? My heart. Yeah, this is your heart. I, I lost my duck. Can I have a heart? Yeah, I think we've got one more here. Here we go. Oh, I like it. I really like it. All right. Thank and we, you. I'm putting these hearts on your hands for a reason. Because God wants us to love with our hands. Yeah. So when you reach out and you help people, you're loving them with your hands, with your actions. So let's thank God today for helping us to understand how love works. Let's put our hands together. Hey, Adeline, let's put our hands together. Say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much, for teaching us that we should love others with our actions through our hands. Amen. Amen. Good job. All right, I think Miss Becky might have some songs for us. Do you want to sing this morning? It, yeah. Is it okay if I take my mask mm -hmm. off? Let's sing Jesus Loves Me because you all do such a nice job with it. We'll do that one too. We'll do, we'll do deep and wide too if you want to, okay? But let's do Jesus Loves Me first. Maybe you can tell them to sing, Elena. Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know. But he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Very good. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Very good. Now you want to sing deep and wide? Is that the one you want to sing? Sing deep and wide? Can we do deep and wide? Yeah. All right, let's stand, stand up. up. Let's gotta show him. Show him. You think you talk to him and stand up and sing it with us? Come on. Deep and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Okay, we gotta do the. Now you ready? Wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. Wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing. Y'all have a good day. Keep your hearts Thank on your you. hands. You remember to love people with what you do. Good job. That's too cool. All right. Down you go. If you all could just sing with as much enthusiasm as the kids do. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Would you stand with me, please? Lock. 
from sin defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear all, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Friends, our giving is different in these days, and yet we give. We give for the good work of the kingdom. Will you pray with me? Generous God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have shown us what it means to love, and you have called us to follow your example, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, to offer our lives and our resources in your service. So accept these gifts we bring today and all of those that have been given in the days leading up to today. May they help us to spread the love we have received to the world around us. Amen. So I'd like to start my sermon with a show of hands. How many of us in this room have ever laid down our life for our friends? Right, because you're all still with us. None of us have, right? That's a, that's a pretty big difference uh, for us because in our first in our passage from 1 John today, we see that Christians should be recognized by their willingness to lay down their lives for one another. But I'd say that most of us have probably not had an opportunity to literally lay down our lives for anyone. I mean, thankfully, we are not persecuted for our Christianity in the way they were in the early days of Christianity, nor do we live in some war-torn area where our lives are constantly at risk. So I guess I'm glad 
that our writer immediately clarifies that first statement. And in verse 17, we read what that really means beyond literal life and death. In verse 17, it says, How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. So thank goodness that doesn't necessarily mean that all of us have to put our lives on the line every day to do this Christianity thing right. But what is it exactly that we do have to do? Well, I think our writer tells us here, help those who are in need. And then you will know that you are doing this new commandment that Christ gave us at his last supper to love one another as God has loved us in Christ. So love is our gift. When we answer that tug on our hearts at some point in our lives to follow this Jesus of Nazareth, we get a gift of love in the Savior of our lives. That gift of love is what guides us from here on out. And when we love like that, it will cost us something. Probably not our last dying breath, but it will cost us more than just a cursory discomfort. To give love like Jesus did, it'll mean doing without something, something that is a comfort for us, something maybe that we didn't realize we could live without. Fred Craddock, whom you've heard me quote many times, He's one of my favorite storytelling preachers, also from the same area of Tennessee as most of my family, so I understand his language. <laughs> but he once told a story about his family being this kind of neighbor and loving in this kind of way. He said, when I was a boy, our nearest neighbors down in West Tennessee were an African-American family, John and Janetta Graves, and their sons, Lee Grant and J.W., they had a well in the backyard with a crank and a bucket to get to the water, just like we did. But theirs was shallow, and sometimes John Graves would come up and call out to my father, Mr. Fred, and Daddy would go out there, and John would have a couple of buckets. I came to get some water, our well is dry, and my father would always pick up a stone, rub the dirt off as best he could, and drop it in our well. And that's the way he could tell how much water our well had. If it was kind of shallow, there would be a tinnish, a tinnish splash. And my father would say to John, well, we're going to divide this. Looks like we'll have something to drink, maybe wash your hands, but no bath tonight. But when he dropped a stone in there and it went kerplunk, that's a technical term, <laughs> my father would say, take all you want. Take enough to have a couple of baths. Thankfully, what I see and our lives here at First Baptist is often not that tinnish splash he talked about. We tend to drop our stone and we hear that kerplunk quite often. We have opportunities, I think, that most smaller churches do not. And that we have the resources and people who are deep wells of grace to ensure that we are loving others as we have been called to do. But I caution us in that our simple charity isn't always the best answer. There have been so many people who've researched in recent years about the most helpful ways that we offer ourselves, all from our deep wells of abundance. The love that Jesus is talking about here isn't a love that simply tosses a few plastic toys to kids in Kenya. It's not just providing a few pairs of socks to those in need. And I couldn't tell you for sure whether that kind of charity will definitely hurt a group of people or a person, maybe, maybe not. But what people really need is often much deeper and more complex than that kind of simplistic charity work, I think, that has become the norm for much of Christianity. And our letter writer here says that when we give of ourselves in love, love like Christ, we ought to be losing something in the process. 
this active kind of love is one that should cost us something. If we're following God's commandment of love in our lives, it ought to cost us something. One pastor said it this way, we cannot believe in Jesus without believing in love, and we cannot have love without action. We cannot have love without action. Hearts on our hands. So what is your love for others costing you today? What have you given up for Jesus lately? I think that most of us think, well, we'll never, we'll never be Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We'll never be Desmond Tutu. We'll, we're not going to be part of leading some major movement in the world. We'll probably not have to give up our livelihoods and our lives in the way that they did. But we might have to give up something, at least if we're doing it right. That's what our writer from 1 John tells us. And so I got to thinking about what are things that we give up? If it's not our lives, literally, uh, if it's not being called to ministry and giving ourselves to a vocation, what do we give as Christians? Obviously, the first that comes to mind is giving of our resources. I mean, this seems really straightforward, and I know all of you didn't come for a stewardship sermon today, <laughs> but I'll tell you that most of us aren't sacrificially giving from what we earn. Whether it's our income from a job or stocks or properties or whatever it may be, we often aren't adding that all up together and at least giving the meager 10% that we are told about in the Bible that's a tithe. We often set up our giving one year and don't think about it for years until decades pass. And yet, what we have grows in time. We're given an abundance. We have so much to give, and yet, and yet we don't. Why is that? Are we giving sacrificially? Did it cost us something to write that check, to give online, to the work that God is doing? And if we aren't, if it doesn't hurt a little to write that check, are we loving the way we're called to love? Something else we might give up is our reputations. I think with all of the hot political fervor in the country today, we, we peacemakers tend to try to stay out of hard conversations. But that all but makes us irrelevant to the good work of justice in this world. I mean, Jesus called us to love people beyond what we're expected to. We are to stand up for those who have been condemned by others. We are to love the unlovable. We are to be friends with Samaritans or today's version of that outcast and hated group. We might lose some friends in this climate because we're doing what Jesus called us to do, loving people enough to be willing to lose something. I know that as a pastor, it's always a gamble for me to do what I feel called to do, to love the way I feel called to love, because something has unfortunately in our society become some political football. But as I seek to, currently, I'm working with our black brothers and sisters. I'm lifting them up. I'm looking for ways to struggle toward equity in ways we haven't reached just yet. And my goodness, I get accused of all sorts of awful things but it's worth the struggle because I know that I am loving out loud, not just in my speech, but in truth and in action. I also think that maybe we ought to give up the kind of charity we've always known. As I was talking about earlier, much of our charity is too simple. It doesn't deal with the complex realities in this world. Maybe there's a more helpful way of giving we have always been told, I think most of us who grew up in church anyway, that we should give things to those in need and as we should. We go buy our items and we drop them off or we send them off and we feel really good about ourselves and what we're doing for the world. But while our food pantries do need actual food and clothing and whatever else it is they're giving out, 
More than that, they also need volunteers. They need people to show up. They need people to love in action. Dedicated not just to giving out, but to changing poverty from the ground up, too. So, yes, we all need something in a bind, and those are needs we need to meet, but they are a temporary fix. And I think churches, we tend to fall into this trap because we want a project we can do easily, something that, you know, puts a, puts a track in, in something and hands it to somebody that, you know, hey, you got a pair of socks and a message from Jesus, right? <laughs> but when we do something a little bit more, I think we're loving more like Jesus. It's much harder for us it's much more of a sacrifice to really seek out those who are struggling, to get to know them, to get to know what's happened in their lives, why they're struggling, how to make fundamental changes in their futures. It's part of the reason, I think, that here at First Baptist, we, we offer options for giving through organizations that are trying to do just that, that are working from the ground up. How do we how do we address the underlying problems? At Christmas, you know, we give to Heifer International. That's one way to set up communities to thrive, to provide them a means to better themselves. We're currently working on child literacy. That sounds like, oh, that's not Christianity. In fact, it is. Children reading is how they grow in faith. So we are working toward more of that. As the world reopens, we're doing more in person. We are volunteering at the food pantry, not just dropping off our donations. And in time, I hope that our work here becomes even more complex, as complex as the needs around us, to do the kind of sacrificial loving Jesus calls us to do, the kind that costs us a little bit more than just the extra bag of groceries. Though, of course, we don't want you to stop bringing those because, again, we do need to fill those gaps. But when we learn to appreciate what people are really going through, when we stand with them in solidarity against the systems working against them, when we pray for and work for and even vote for things that support and sustain them rather than digging them deeper into their poverty and struggle, that's... That's the kind of love I really believe is sacrificial love, the kind that a writer in 1 John is telling us about. We are called to listen through their perspective, to grow our own love to meet their needs. So friends, I ask us today, let's take from our deep wells. Let's find ways to put our love into action. Let's give it up for Jesus today and every day. It will take something from us, something we might not want to give up, maybe because we're inclined to our comfortable, self-focused ways of living, but I promise you it's worth it. As the writer of 1 John tells us, we will have a boldness before God when we do what God has called us to do namely to love God and to love one another as he has loved us. We can rest assured then that we are on Christ's path of love when we are giving up our own comforts for the sake of others. And we love others because we are so loved ourselves. It's our gift to the world from the abundance of love we've been given by God. And that, my friends, is a pretty great thing to give away. As we gather to sing our final hymn, we carve out a moment. We hear these words from 1 John. We hear these words from God. And if you're feeling a response to God right now, whether it's following Jesus or joining with this church in our work in this journey, or sharing your own call to do something different in the days to come, to love more sacrificially. This is our time to do it, to share with one another. So I'll be down front during our final hymn, and I would be glad to pray with you to help you share this call on your life. You are welcome. Come.
our commitment hymn today is People Need the Lord. Would you stand if you're able? now the benediction. May the God of love move you toward sacrificial ways of living. May Christ remind us that we are called to love beyond limits. And may the Holy Spirit empower us to abide in God's love and share it abundantly.